Hi hey everyone and welcome. We're down here in my wormery, but before we get to work on today's feeding, I just figured I'd give everyone a little peek to see some of our vermicompost at work outside, providing a, a foundation for these all these little plants to grow in. Nice little uh, compost mixture. These plants are in the process of being hardened off, getting them ready to be able to eventually live outside because they've only been indoors getting artificial light. The idea here is to give them uh, a couple hours more each day, working up their tolerance for the strong natural sunlight. So um, they've been out here for about an hour. But at some point we'll bring them back inside, but for now they're getting a nice little healthy dose of natural sunlight. So, all right, let's get down to feeding the worms. Yeah, you can tell I've already got a little bit of a head start going on here. I was down here earlier and I didn't even intend to film this feeding, but uh, I did end up back up at the computer questioning what happened here most previously, and I just couldn't remember, so I had to, you know, not only check my log, uh, I also reviewed a little bit of the video just to remind me how things went here last time. Um, and it's been two feedings since we showed this bin on video, so I figured I would just grab the camera and we'll shoot a little bit to see how things are uh, progressing down here. When I was down here earlier, I had not yet even put my glove on. But now, now I do have my glove on, but earlier I was just using the stick to probe around to lift off this piece, piece of paper, which was all resting over the center here. So I used the stick just to move the, the paper aside and just to jostle the top maybe half inch of the material around a little bit to get a sense of what's happening. And there's a bunch of worms right beneath the surface, but I didn't go much further than um, just a little tiny bit to get a peek. But uh, that's when I figured, hey, you know what, why don't I just go ahead and grab the camera and um, bring you guys along since it has been two feedings since this bin was last featured in a video. And not only was this bin featured in a, a video um, two feedings ago. Um, its history was actually featured in a different video. It was actually featured in a video where I was building the next following bin that came after this one. And I had simply documented the intervals of different activities of this bin um, so as to mimic them because I was really liking the results I was getting in this bin. So um, considering how much I was really liking this bin and the progress it was making and the way I was using it as a model for Launching off my next bin, um, it's a little surprising that I would have skipped a video during its last feeding, but um, I think I was just kind of in a pinch for time at that point, and I, um, I just wanted to get the thing fed. So let's get rid of this stick. We don't need it now that we've got a better tool or hand to dig around in here with. I guess the main reason I wanted to use the camera for this feeding um, was just because of some of the stuff I was observing just during that first one one or two minutes that I was in here moving the covering papers and uh, checking things out. It's because everywhere I look I see cocoons. Like here is a, a pretty good example, right? So I just look straight down in front of me, right here in the middle of the bin. And I can see a, a nice dark golden brown color one over here as well as another one right here next to it. And then I believe there was another one right here and another one right here on top of the bedding. And the light is even a little bit dim here. Here's another one. I think I forgot to turn over the main overhead light. Let me go take care of that. Hold on a second. Oh yeah, now we're talking. What a difference. It was so nice and bright in here with the window open and all the bright sunshine streaming in that I didn't notice that we weren't even using the main lamp. So it was mainly the just the abundance of cocoons all over here in the middle that wanted me to grab the camera and shoot it um, even before I poked down to see th how things are progressing in here. See, like here's another cocoon just sitting right there on the surface. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of neat, you know, because I don't know, for some reason it's something I don't normally see. I think it's because of the absence of moisture on the surface of my bins usually. But now that there's a moisture everywhere, you can see nice, damp, soft, wet ca castings everywhere. There's also cocoons right here. Again, I just put my finger down. There's a cocoon right there, right there, right there, right there. 
I guess it's just a matter of looking. If you look, you'll see them because they're everywhere. Wow. All right. So, you know, forgive me for being so wowed by it. It's just something I don't really um, get the pleasure of seeing very often. But I think that's going to change now that I'm using plastic to cover up my bins. The plastic is really just nothing fancy. A lot of people use bubble wrap, but in my case, it's a simple plastic shopping bag. Right now, I got the dirty side of it folded in. And that'll just go right back down. And um, it seems to be creating an environment that the worms are enjoying very much. So I think we're going to stick to feeding down the middle, because that's where we fed last time. And this paper was really down the middle, indicating that it was the spot where we had last fed. So we'll use the paper again the same exact way, because um, there's enough of it here. But I've also got a more traditional coffee filter that we could use to mark the feeding zone, too, since that's what we do here, right? That's our tradition. But before we can add today's feeding, we're just going to have to excavate a little bit here. And this was just something I didn't really want to start trying to do with the stick earlier. In fact, when I was here earlier, I wasn't here to feed. I was just curious to see what's happening. So obviously we've got large food remnants, banana peel right there. And I guess this is a seven day interval now since the last feeding. I believe the last couple feedings were 10 days between each feeding. Yeah, here it is. I actually did update this. The uh, It only went up to here to the second feeding, but these um, third feeding that was skipped and now today's fourth feeding at day 37 of age. So a bin that's just a little bit over a month old looking this far along. It's amazing and it's attestable, I guess, to the fact that there were just so many worms added to this bin. And I'm not kidding when I tell you that this, <laughs> this was launched off with a huge number of worms. I could put a link to it up here in the corner for you of when this uh, when this bin was originally introduced with the big mass of worms. But then um, what came later was a second introduction of even more worms and uh, a large amount, if I do say so. That's for certain. So here we've, we've got ourselves a pretty good gap opened up here to throw our next feeding into. I look everywhere I look, here's like a banana stem, right? Another piece of banana. We'll put it over here with the uh, other stem. But everything else you see in here is mostly bedding, I think. Well, now I dig down a little bit deeper. Now it's just a layer of worms. So I guess that's really where they are. There's this lowest layer of just mush, and that's where all the worms are hanging out at the, the very bottom. So we'll let them remain a little bit isolated from the feeding that we're going to add now. We'll just keep this goop, goop on top of them. And they'll just burrow beneath it anyway, just from these bright lights that we've got going on overhead. So they'll, they'll be inspired to dive down into the material on their own, whether or not we cover them up or not. Um, only because the food that I'm adding is frozen. So it... Uh, Could be a little bit of a shock if we just chucked in a bunch of frozen food right onto the backs of these little guys hanging out over here. Um, maybe we'll give them a second to burrow down. Maybe we could sprinkle a little bit of bedding on top of these little guys before we add the food. Because in a way you really can't go wrong with adding some bedding. I'm kind of glad that I came back in here to um, check this bin after only seven days because usually we've been w w waiting 10 days in between feedings, but it's only been seven days. And at this point, these couple of scraps of banana were the only things that I could find recognizable in here. Everything else is just scraps of cardboard and bedding. Um, everything that was food, I, I think, has for the most part been consumed. So I think this feeding is actually coming right in the nick of time. Well, anticipating the fact that we've got a lot of hungry mouths to feed in this bin. I think we're just going to make sure we've got a good, plentiful amount of food in here. So even though that 
two heaping handfuls seemed like a pretty good amount. I think I've got a little bit of room left in here, and I'm going to use that as, as a reason to give them a third handful. That'll fit right in there perfectly. They've got themselves a nice variety of different foods to enjoy. Let's put these fragments of banana that we found along the way back in here. And they've got some grit here, pulverized eggshell. Oh, I went through that container pretty quickly. Good thing I've got another one on standby. And we'll top off our feeding with some coffee. Coffee is just one of those things that's pretty much in every one of my worm feedings because, oops, because <laughs> uh, there's always some used coffee around. And now there's some even used coffee on my table. So, whatever, I'll get over there to clean that up later. Let's get these little guys finished off, because we're done here. This was really the only thing I wanted to take care of today. I, um, I just, you know, I, I look into this material down through here, and look at that, it's just, holy cow. Just mobbed with worms. It's incredible. This is a piece of banana, too. See if that's the same thing happening over here. I think it is. It just feels that way when you put your fingers in it. Yeah. And I was really just wanting to demonstrate that, you know, other than some of the little itsy bitsy scraps of the bedding that was in here, mainly the uh, the stems of all the leaves <laughs> remains, but hardly anything else. Just castings and worms. Holy cow. And it was because of that, you know, a 37-day-old bin usually doesn't look like this out on the outer edges, especially when the feedings have been going down the middle. So it was like, how could this bin be so far along so quickly? And it's because it's got just so many worms in it. It's incredible. <laughs> and that, that was kind of my gut feeling, was like waiting 10 days to feed this bin again just does not seem soon enough. So I better step up the feedings on this bin all right wow okay I, I assume that that's the same thing if we were to poke down into this side too just you know the huge mob of worms that were um loaded into this bin have just spread out all over and pretty much decimated the food that was given to them <laughs> i'm wondering if we might benefit from just using what remains in this box it's, it's kind of like a cover bedding even though there's really pretty much nothing left in this poor little box. Oh well. I thought that some bedding across the top might benefit this bin. I'll probably just gobble right gobble it right up within a day or two. Well, I'll go outside and I'll get some more more of this to refill my box. And maybe give them a little bit more later. So um, but that could wait. We're we're pretty much done here as far as the feeding is concerned and the check-in, but I would definitely give this bin high marks. I mean, really high marks, because of the way it looks, the material's so perfect, um, the moisture level seems just right. I mean, I found little scraps of food, so it's not like they were starving. There were banana scraps there still, but I'm glad that I, um, you know, had a chance to reinforce that feeding that was really running pretty low at this point after seven days so I think just a note to self on this bin and I guess the other bin that was launched with a huge number of worms was that uh, was that waiting 10 days between the feedings at this point in these bins might be waiting too long enough to make sure I keep up with their uh, appetite so we're gonna go back to our regular tradition here of covering up with our coffee filter to indicate where the last feeding occurred. And right on top of that we'll return this plastic shopping bag. These little handles are pretty much still clean so why don't we keep them inside the bag so they can stay clean. 
So I'm starting to feel like of all my bins right now, this one might be my favorite. I don't know if that's possible. <laughs> um, but at least it's a bin that I don't feel like I've got to worry about, at least from a moisture perspective, you know what I mean? So that's the one thing. It's nice to feel that you could just not, you know, check on them for a week or two and know that everything's just fine. So it's nice to check in on a bin that's doing well. So I'm glad I bought the camera along and uh, hopefully you're glad too. And if you are and if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, then please remember to give me a thumbs up. Giving me a thumbs up shows that you liked the video and I really appreciate that. And uh, also consider becoming a subscriber to the channel as well. That's really appreciated too. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.